Well, the holders made it very clear today that they want to hold on to that uh, World Cup for at least another four years, and they'll have that opportunity, of course, in, I think, about 48 hours' time when they meet uh, Argentina uh, in this final. And I guess if you are a purist, uh, you're probably very happy that these two uh, highly qualified teams and both with a collection of some of the best players, of course, in the world, probably the best players in the world, one on each side, and this clash between Mbappe and Messi, who will um, clash in a sense, and probably, I suppose, the one who has the best game will probably be in the team that wins the World Cup. With me now is Andy Buckley, a football broadcaster out of the UK. Andy, I thank you very much indeed for your time. Once again, nice to talk to you. France 2-0, were they good for the two-goal win, do you think? Yeah, they were. I felt a bit sorry for Morocco because they huffed and they puffed. Uh, they just didn't have the quality really in front of goal that uh, they needed to, uh, to to get away back into the match. An early goal, a couple of injuries to the defenders uh, as well, rocked them back. So uh, it was a brave effort from Morocco and you could tell from the scenes at the end that uh, they deserve the acclaim of their own supporters who've been there in large numbers. So a memorable World Cup for lots of reasons, including Morocco's contribution, but just in answer to your question, yeah, the headline is, I suppose, that France deserved to go through and has given us what is a mouth-watering showpiece between uh, France and Argentina in the final. It didn't seem that uh, Morocco uh, were overawed by this occasion. I mean, I suppose there was the possibility, particularly after conceding that early goal, uh, that the French could have run right. But um, there was tremendous fight and spirit shown by the Moroccans wasn't there, but at the end of the day, you probably need a bit more skill than just all heart and all kind of determination. Yeah, you do. And if you think of the French second goal, it was a deflection that uh, allowed them to, uh, uh, you know, increase the lead and take the pressure off for that frantic final few minutes. But yeah, I mean, Morocco uh, did well. Um, they didn't just have that kind of uh, ability, though, I think, where it, where it mattered. Um, but for the for the spirit and the work rate, I think there's an example there to be followed by a lot of other teams, whatever sport you play, uh, because it was it was outstanding really that they rallied behind each other. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I must admit, I did want Morocco to win. I wanted the underdogs to come through. Mm, As, mm. With France having beaten England as well, I just uh, don't know. It's a little <laughs> bit of a sour test as an English. <laughs> Uh, but um, it's going to be uh, France against Argentina. It's going to be Mbappe against uh, Messi, and uh, all sorts of comparisons. But mm. Um, mm. yeah, I think I think we've got the World Cup final that this tournament deserves. Mm. Uh, let's put mm. it that way. I just hope it lives up to the billing. Yes, you talk about Messi versus Mbappe and this race, I suppose, between these two, if I, my prediction is correct, for the player of the tournament. And I'm wondering, after this performance today, OK, Messi was brilliant yesterday, but Mbappe, particularly the work he did in setting up that second goal, would he be just ahead, do you think, of Messi? Who would be leading in that race between these two for player of the tournament when they take to the field for the final? Well, I don't know. Maybe it's winner takes all. Maybe they'll let the winner decide it and... Uh... It'll perhaps come down to something as uh, as, as obvious as that. Um, uh, and it's all subjective anyway, I suppose, isn't it, in terms of uh, who you think is the best player. Uh, you know, one or two of the Moroccans, really, bearing in mind the challenges that they've had, have, have acquitted themselves uh, pretty well. Uh, Messi, uh, yeah, as you say, last night, his third goal, I just thought was sensational. Uh, and he's proved me wrong a bit, to be honest with you, because I thought he was... Uh, a fading force he is really I mean he, he, he realises that his days are numbered well his, his leg speed his leg speed is not what it was he doesn't do those long weaving runs anymore does he no he doesn't he doesn't but he does control the game mm, mm. Uh, and he, he can read the pace of the match and he can know when to to put the, those moments in I do think like with any cup competition, that you need a certain amount of luck and a uh, huge debate over that first uh, goal last night for Argentina and whether it should have been a penalty or not. Um, you know, and what did Messi, you think? What, uh, what was your take on it? Um, I thought it wasn't a penalty. I'll be honest with you. I know it's divided opinion, but I didn't think it was a, a penalty. I thought, what could the goalkeeper do? I just thought he can't move out of the way. Um, and uh, I thought it was very harsh on him, very harsh on him indeed. Uh, and uh, once the first goal goes in, then, um, you know, the, the, the writing was on the wall for 
Croatia. So the two favourites came through, I suppose, uh, and the two gallant losers, Croatia and uh, Morocco, are left to fight it out in the 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 match that I suppose at, at most World Cups, maybe not this one, is is classed as a kind of meaningless third fourth place playoff. But but Morocco, I think uh, they'd quite like that tag of being the third best team yeah. in the world. Mm, mm. Um, so 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 there is some sort of kind of. Uh, uh, meaning to this game, whereas I think more or less all the teams are probably thinking, well, can we not just go home rather exactly, than playing yeah. it? Uh, I mean, I think, yes, if, you, if you're one of the major nations of the footballing world, you know, like uh, Brazil or in Germany or in England or Spain, you wouldn't want to be involved in that game. But yes, I think for Morocco, uh, by all means. So r- regardless of what happens in that match, uh, can we now say that Morocco is a major force in world football? Um, well, I suppose in uh, in terms of the uh, caliber of team at this World Cup and the status that you get from it, yeah. But uh, I don't know what their w- official ranking will be. Not that those matter particularly. Uh, but it's great for the for the Arab and African nations that they are emerging forces and the, the kind of pioneers in terms of their achievements. Uh, they've got to they've got to build on it. They, don't, they have to build on it, don't they? I mean, I, th- I suppose one obvious target for Morocco would be to win the uh, Africa Cup, which they didn't uh, the last time. I think they got put out in the quarterfinals. And yeah, I think their world yeah. ranking. I think their world ranking was about twenty something. So I imagine they'll be inside the top twenty now with this performance. So I imagine a lot of countries will probably want to play them. Yeah, no, they will, and I think uh, it's a great boost for Moroccan football, um, and, and uh, that's what it's about in, in some respects, the fact that it does elevate them to this status globally that uh, Morocco, not, not just in a football sense as well, I think if you think of the tourism and you think of the business side of it, um, you know, Morocco suddenly, they put themselves on the map, haven't they? I know it's a cliche, but it, it, they, they have in terms of... Uh, awareness um, and uh, belief. So, you know, fair play to them. Fair play to the organisers as well. Uh, I think, it, it, you know, there's going to be more teams in the next World Cup. So how you work that one out in terms of uh, who plays who and how big the groups are and so on. Big debate about that. Who the managers will be. You know, in England, we, the, the debate rages on about Gareth Southgate, whether he should stay in charge or not. It'd be his decision. Uh, but it's a massive uh, talking point. But I'll be honest with you, I think in England now, after what happened last weekend, people have moved on and, uh, yeah, the, the, there will be some... There will be a, a mild interest in the World Cup final in England, I'll be honest with you. Maybe that's understating it slightly, but mm. perhaps in the New Zealand as well. I think now, that for us, now England are out, then it's uh, roll on the start of the... or the restart of the, the domestic season, which for me is, you know, a week tonight. This time next week, I'll be at... The yes, had watching Manchester City play Liverpool in the League Cup and, uh, you know, a lot of domestic fans in England are now thinking, right, let's get back to uh, to business. From this perspective, down at the bottom of the world, Andy, watching the reaction that's taken place, it seems to me slightly odd or unusual by World Cup standards when talking about England that there hasn't been a witch hunt on people like uh, Kane and Southgate and others for, again, falling when the big prize was within their reach. Yeah, Fair comment. Um, I think Kane, uh, I don't know, he he, he, he has escaped uh, the, the kind of wrath of the fans. I think there's a lot of admiration for Harry Kane, so he's not going to get it in the neck like a lot of uh, Englishmen in the past. And there is a long list of people who fell from the penalty spot. Um, I think the long delay didn't help him. Uh, if he had just picked the ball up and got on with it, it might have been a different outcome. Very fine margins. They were analysing last night on television how actually... He actually struck the ball and it was just fractionally different. He sort of leaned back slightly more than he did with his first penalty. Uh, as regards Southgate, I'll be honest with you, I'm very firmly in the camp that I don't think he should carry on. Um, as Roy Keane said on television in England last night, he said, England have found a very good way of losing matches. Uh, and it's a habit that has lasted for decades. Uh, and we need to get out of that habit. I'm not sure really he's a winner. At the elite level, he's not won anything. Gareth Southgate as a manager, except he I has. Know people might say, he, he, sorry, he, he has taken this English team to more playoffs than all of the previous coaches, apparently stretching back to the 1960s to when you won the World Cup in 1966. He's got a pretty good record by comparison with his recent peers, and especially. 
Yeah, he has. Um, and, and, and he's brought England a long way. So I'm not knocking his effort in that respect. Um, but you can interpret statistics yeah, whichever sure. way you want. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's a bit like Alf Ramsey. You know, he said, oh, he's done better than Alf Ramsey. Not, I mean, Alf Ramsey won the World Cup, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But, you know, England hardly played any games in those eras. So all the statistics, a bit like domestic football. He's made so many... Champions League appearances and scored so many goals, mm. blah blah blah, and it's because it's sort of but wall to wall football where it's didn't so much, used yeah. to be. Mm. Um, so, you know, I, I just think that he's. I don't. I'm not convinced. You know, so, uh, Rio Ferdinand was saying on television tonight that uh, England have have gone so far, and if he gives it up now, he'll think, oh well, I'm just handed over this this nucleus of this uh, what could be the next golden generation for England. To somebody else, but you know, would did, was he brave enough with his substitutions? Mm, did he make mm. his substitutions early enough against France? Did he go for you know? Did, was he proactive? Or, well, you know, rather than being uh, a bit reactive. Maybe the best advice I can give you, and Andy, is um, maybe the FA might like to appoint a guy called Brendan McCallum as your next manager or coach for the English well, team. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know, um, unbelievable. Yeah. Anyway, Andy, it's uh, been great to talk to you. I appreciate your time very much, and uh, thank you for your contributions. Um, they've been excellent. Pleasure. Have a good day.